Hey, we're back with Brian Denny, energy assessor and founder of HomeEnergyScore.com, and myself, Alex Roy, trusted realtor in Eastside Portland, where we're going to take an in-depth look through this house and find out what's this Home Energy Score program all about. Ready to go, Brian? Let's do it, Alex. All right, right on. <laughs> all right, Brian, where are we starting? We're going to start in the attic, Alex. Cool. All right. So, quick question for you. You see this sheetrock? Yep. Would you use that for a front door? I wouldn't. That's pretty much what we're doing here. Oh. This is a heat loss, major heat loss area, and its only protection is a thin piece of sheetrock. My goodness. So let's take a look upstairs. Yeah. And um, first of all, take note that this is a gas furnace, and it's darn new. So if you take a look at 95.5% efficiency, this individual house went all out, and they did a great job with this. So a couple things to take a look at here. You can see that the attic itself, these are all of the duct vents, well sealed and wrapped with insulation inside and plastic on the exterior. Huge factor in maintaining heat or cooling in a property. And when you see this, someone's put a lot of time and love into this house. Um, a lot of times you'll see an open vent like this or a duct and they'll have a liquid masking on it. And that's great too, no doubt about it, but it's not quite the same as keeping in the actual insulation that you'll find here inside of your fiberglass. Is that a really expensive thing to do, be wrapping and insulating all this duct work? It's not that as expensive as you may think it to be. Now in the attic, a lot of, like all contracting, time and labor is the cost more than the materials. Mm -hmm. When you have this open surface like this, they can have this whole thing wrapped in a day for a guy or two. It's not very hard. Underneath in the crawl space, that's when the costs add up quite a bit because you'll have people there for extended periods of time. So this one, not bad at all. Um, you'll Two guys out here that have it wrapped up, probably a thousand bucks or something, no, less than that even. But is this something where you would say you would see noticeable savings on if you're Absolutely. insulating your duct work? Absolutely. Inside your duct work, you can lose a, a good you know, amount of your heat and your cooling there alone. So when we do an assessment, one thing that we look at all the time is, are the ducts sealed and are they masked? And so those are two different questions that we have. With both of those, You've got double barriers for heating and cooling. You can easily save 15% of your energy just in that alone. Instead of having this release hot air or cold air, a lot of people will still put duct tape on these things. Duct tape is great, but not for ducks. <laughs> <laughs> um, the other thing, take in line, you take a look at the actual deck of the attic. This is blown in cellulose. This has been in here for quite some time. Um, I, it's fine and for the time. This is a 1924 house, so you have to keep in mind that this thing was not built to, you know, codes that we have today. But um, this does a fine job. Like to see this maybe upgraded and maybe have a little bit thicker barrier here. And then you can also do more in the attic up here because this is going to get hot in the summertime. And some radiant uh, a barrier sheeting up here would be really, really nice. Um, foam ridge board, things of that nature. But um, when I walked up here, I'm very impressed with this. This alone is going to definitely give you a another point up on your score. So now outside, what are we looking at, Brian? A couple different things. So we were looking at the actual siding material that's on there, because that plays a, obviously a factor in the scoring system. And we're looking for insulation inside the walls. Obviously, newer homes and code had insulation at a period of time, but these older houses, again, didn't. But you can see someone actually took the time and drilled in and pumped in a blown in insulation. Again, huge efficiency. And this is something you can do for the least amount of cost for the most amount of return. Wonderful. And then what about the, the hat of the house? The if hat you will. of the house, the roof. We are looking at the roof itself, the color of the roof, the materials, all of those make a big factor as to the efficiency. Black attracts more heat, white reflects it. Concrete tiles versus standard wood or composite materials. They all add up in the score. Awesome. All right, so here we're looking at the hot water heater. And a couple things you'll find with this, again, something else that's on the assessment. We're gonna look at the age of it and the condition of the hot water tank. This particular house, brand new, gas fueled, um, and it's in an excellent condition, excellent, excellent shape. So other than this, you couldn't get too much better unless you change from your traditional and go into a whole other grade of a heat pump tank. Wow, what about oil furnaces? Mm, oil furnaces, well, we don't see too many of those anymore, but the oil furnaces, uh, the lowest grade you're gonna find in a furnace due to the fact that they're not very efficient, they emit a lot of carbon emissions, and you know it's they don't provide as much as they should in return when you compare them to the electricity or natural gas. 
What about insulating a basement? I see concrete walls here, but there's no insulation. Is that good, bad, neutral? Well, the insulation itself of a basement is always a great idea. Obviously, if you can maintain a higher R value down here to keep that heating or cooling in one place instead of opening up to an exterior shell, which would just be the concrete itself. Concrete's a fine insulation, but it doesn't do the same thing you would find in your fiberglass or anything that might be blown in type material. Likewise, I'd also like to have seen if the, the floor of this roof, if you will, to have been insulated as well if you're not using your basement. Again, putting in a rolled out or even a sprayed on type product, fiberglass or other, that will increase the energy efficiency of the house, makes a huge difference in the score. This house actually lost points on the house due to the fact that there's one vent, which is hard to see, but it's right here, which means this is now a conditioned space. And because it's a conditioned space, you have heat being lost down here in an almost somewhat unusable area other than storage. But now I, the house uh, got deemed down probably the whole point because of that. Interesting. So now how about the windows, Brian? All right, we're working with a double pane vinyl window. Again, uncommon for 1924, but it looks great, doesn't it? Beauty of this window is it has a better insulation value than what you might find in the old aluminums that are in there and the wood windows that I've traditionally had in a home like this. Be careful though when you purchase a window, you always want to ask about the U value, and that is how much heat is being transferred throughout the actual material. A great U value window on a double pane, one or two, but you can find something as low as high as a five. It might look good, but it might not actually do the job. So Brian, I just heard you say U value, and then I heard an R value earlier. That's a lot of things to keep track of. Isn't there a simple way to understand the energy score of this house? Well, that's really my job is to keep it simple for you. Okay. So when we're finished, you're going to get the details on the U values and the R values and so forth and how to make those improvements in the home if you like to. But what you're really after is the two-page report, which has the actual score on it. In this case, this house scored a 6 out of 10, 10 being the very best. This is a very efficient home, especially considering it's a 1924 house. Oh, wow. So six out of 10 is actually good? That's better than the average. Wow, that's incredible. So could one um, assume that a brand new built house that has all the best energy efficiency in it could achieve like a nine or a 10 potentially? Nine's more likely. Um, tens are very hard to get. Right. But yeah, an eight to a nine, definitely a brand new building. And a lot of it, again, comes back down to the quality of windows that they put in square footage that we're heating or cooling, and then what is the efficiency of those mechanics that they put in to make that happen. Excellent. So Brian, let's imagine that a seller has undergone the audit, they got their score back, uh, they got a little bit of money in their uh, checkbook, they want to improve their score. How can you help them with that? Great question. So the report's going to help them as much as I will. On the second page of the report, you're going to see this. Today's score, score with improvements, and then what you can actually do to make those improvements. For example, if we wow. did have the aluminum windows in this house, the score would read on it, increase the windows to an Aragon gas filled double pane vinyl, and that would increase the efficiency of the home. And there'd be other things such as the insulation and so forth that would be on there. Very cool. And now I'm just thinking off the top of my head with this, that's great for the seller, but it's also great information for the buyers knowing that, hey, I can get this home as is, but here's a list of you know, to-do list over the next couple of years of improving its score. Absolutely. And it's very common that buyers will make improvements. Everybody knows that within the first 18 months, they tend to put the most amount of money into their house to make those improvements. But here's the checklist. There's your improvements. So, so sorry. Awesome. Thanks, Brian. Thanks, Alex.